This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. News is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Welcome to News 25 here on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. Today is Friday, November 4th. Well, a man is transported to a Las Vegas trauma center following a freak tragic shooting while driving with his family on Pahrump's south side. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies are reporting that they have arrested a person by the name of Benjamin Talbot for several counts, including one count of owning and possessing a gun by a prohibited person, four counts of attempted murder with a deadly weapon, five counts of battery with a deadly weapon, one count of discharging a gun within a vehicle, two counts of child abuse, and two counts of abuse of an older person. On Thursday night, November 3rd, at approximately 1118, deputies responded to a weapons offense at the intersection of South Indian Reservation Road and Turner Boulevard. That's on the south end of Pahrump. Dispatch advised that a male had been shot in the neck and back. Nye County Sheriff's Office dispatcher said that an unknown suspect had rammed into a vehicle with his vehicle and began firing several rounds into that car and fled the scene. Deputies were able to locate that vehicle described as a gray SUV and engaged in a pursuit on the south end of town. Deputies were able to stop that vehicle with the help of Highway Patrol and the driver and sole occupant of the vehicle identified as 30-year-old Benjamin Talbot. He allegedly threw out two two loaded shotguns out of the car at the time. That pursuit ended on Quarter Horse and Comanche. During the search incident to arrest, Talbot stated that he had narcotics on him and that he admitted to using methamphetamine and that he hadn't slept in approximately five days. Deputies also said Talbot exhibited signs and symptoms of methamphetamine use. According to the report, the investigation revealed that Talbot deliberately shot approximately two rounds into the vehicle and then rammed his vehicle into the victim's vehicle, causing that vehicle to spin out on the roadway on Mann's Road. There was four individuals inside this car. A nine-year-old sustained a shrapnel wound to his face. A 13-year-old sustained a shrapnel wound to his right arm. A 68-year-old male sustained a gunshot wound to his upper back and neck. A 68-year-old female sustained a shrapnel wound to her right eye and the back of her head. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies are reporting that they have arrested a person by the name of and first responders rushed to the scene of a vehicle versus pedestrian crash last night near the center of town. One female was killed walking near the roadway near Petrick Park last night. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies, Nye County Sheriff's Office auxiliary units, and Nevada Highway Patrol were dispatched to a vehicle versus pedestrian crash last night on Basin Avenue near Dahlia Street. Traffic was blocked in both directions near Petrick Park during the investigation. A white pickup truck was involved in the crash and remained on scene. The pedestrian was transported to Desert View Hospital via ground ambulance in grave condition. That individual succumbed to injuries sustained in the crash. No occupants inside the vehicle claimed any injuries at the time of the crash. Nevada Highway Patrol is investigating the cause of this incident. Well, a motorcycle rider is traveling at a high rate of speed and is arrested after police find drugs. On Thursday, October 20th of this year, Nye County Sheriff's Office observed a motorcycle traveling westbound on Irene Street at a high rate of speed. Deputies estimated the motorcycle speed to be 100 miles per hour in a 45 miles per hour zone. Sheriff deputies pursued the motorcycle matching its speed. Deputies attempted to conduct a traffic stop of the motorcycle at West Irene and North Barney, but the motorcycle continued southbound on Barney, failing to yield to deputies. There was a passenger on the back of the motorcycle. The high rate of speed being traveled placed the passenger in danger. The pursuit lasted approximately seven miles, and at the end, the driver of the motorcycle laid the bike down in a park area while trying to evade officers and after allegedly damaging a fence belonging to Comstock Park 
Homeowners Association. The driver of the motorcycle was later identified as Richard Havilland. During a search of Richard's property, sheriff deputies found two baggies containing white crystalline substance and later tested to be methamphetamine. Deputies estimated the weight to be approximately one gram. Richard Havilland was charged by deputies of disobeying a peace officer, endangering the lives of other people, damaging personal property, attempting to sell and or transfer a Scheduled 1 and 2 controlled substance and possession of a Scheduled 1 and 2 controlled substance less than 14 grams. Richard was placed under arrest and transported to the Nye County Detention Center where he was later booked. More local news on the other side of this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back. Well, officers arrest a woman for allegedly stealing mail from a residential home. The Nye County Sheriff's Office report that they have arrested a person by the name of Brittany Jaggers. She is facing charges for conspiracy to commit non-felony crime. According to the declaration of arrest, on October 18th, a ring doorbell captured two individuals, Brittany Jaggers and Aaron Foster, allegedly stealing mail. On October 25th, deputies executed a search warrant for stolen mail by Brittany Jaggers and Aaron Foster. While on the scene, Brittany and Aaron admitted that they were the individuals in the video. The search warrant resulted in finding five of the six pieces of mail reported missing. Piles of other individuals' mail were found, including four official election ballots. And the Nye County District Attorney's Office has requested outside agency assistance in handling two matters concerning Nye County Commissioner Leo Blundo. First, I have uh, he, uh, Arabia says he asked the Nevada Attorney General's Office to review evidence, investigate further if necessity, and decide whether to prosecute Commissioner Blundo for allegedly providing false information in multiple COVID financial relief applications, according to the DA in a press release. He referred the matter to the Attorney General's office. Arabia also says that he has asked the Nevada Department of Investigation to look into the possible improper handling of evidence relating to an incident that occurred at Commissioner Blundo's home on March 28th of this year, which resulted in the felony domestic battery charges against Blundo by Esmeralda County DA Robert Glennon after his office had a conflict of interest in the case and referred it to the AG for review, who then referred it to Robert Glennon's office. D.A. Glennon recently dismissed this case against Blundo. He informed us that he is planning to refile those charges. And a man arrested for kidnapping a woman and stealing from her too. And the Nye County Sheriff's Office has released a report on that. The Nye County Sheriff's Office report that they have arrested a person by the name of Carlos Cortez, who is now facing charges of kidnapping in the first degree and robbery. According to the declaration of arrest in October 21st, deputies were dispatched to investigate an assault. According to the reporting party, Cortez grabbed the female by the hair and pulled her to the front of the house to have her unlock the front door and lead her into the bedroom. Once inside the bedroom, she said he punched her on the left side of her face, pushed and held her down the bed. 45 minutes later, Carlos left the residence and took a leaf blower belonging to the victim. According to the report, deputies then spoke to Cortez by telephone, who refused to meet with them in person. Deputies say they reviewed security camera footage, which allegedly shows a man who resembles Cortez arrived on a bicycle and approached the victim's house. They could hear the altercation but could no longer see the victim and suspect on video for 45 minutes. While reviewing video footage, deputies could hear the victim grunting and grasping which Cortez saying, get up and do you understand I'm not playing around anymore. Cortez allegedly took a ring from the victim as well. Cortez then appears on video leaving the scene on a bike with a leaf blower in hand. Cortez was subsequently arrested on October 22nd and booked into the Nye County Detention Center for the alleged charges of kidnapping in the first degree and robbery. Well, we're going to tell you about the air show happening this weekend right after this break. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Also brought to you by Silver State Health. Visit silverstatehealth.org or call 702-471-0420 for an appointment. 25 local news you can count on 
Well, you might see some increased air traffic this weekend. Aviation Nation is here. Everyone is invited to the 75th Annual Air Show at Nellis Air Force Base this weekend. Nellis Air Force Base hosts Aviation Nation 2022 from November 4th through the 6th. Known as the home of the fighter pilot, this will be the first air show in three years. Aviation Nation 2022 is a capstone event culminating in the celebration of the Air Force's 75th anniversary. For 75 years, American airmen have excelled as they executed the Air Force's mission to fly, fight, and win, delivering air power anytime, anywhere in defense of our nation. Aviation Nation 2022 will include several aerial performances, static displays, and exhibits featuring the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, Aftershock Jet Fire Truck, Air Combat Command's F-35 Lightning II demonstration team, and many others. More than 100,000 spectators are expected to attend. The public is invited to attend. Gates will be open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Buses will take people to the flight line from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. All parking will be at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Aviation Nation welcomes Kelly Hudson this year. Hudson is the first accredited female air boss in the United States, and for 20 years has been an air traffic controller. She retired in 2016 at Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas, Nevada, and she and her family still call Las Vegas home. For more information, you can find a complete schedule and parking information on the web. Well, November is National Family Caregivers Month, which recognizes all the selfless individuals who help care for their loved ones. It also offers a chance to raise awareness about the support they need. Research shows caregiving can take a significant emotional, physical, and financial toll on a person. Family caregiving is an incredibly um, intensive and time-consuming experience. Um, we particularly see this in more complex medical diagnoses, such as dementia, um, where we see a lot of, um, unfortunately, negative effects for family caregivers. According to data from a Parade Media and Cleveland Clinic survey, 36% of caregivers suffer from depression and anxiety, which is 114% more than non-caregivers. In addition, 56% of caregivers say it's not realistic for them to take a day off for their emotional and mental health, though 70% agree they need regular mental and emotional health breaks. Dr. Lucille Carrier, who is a psychologist for Cleveland Clinic, says it's important caregivers get time for themselves. And while it may not always be feasible, there are little things they can do. It could be as little as five minutes, or maybe it needs to be a little bit longer. And I think that's um, some kind of personal reflection on the, the um, case of the caregiver to kind of decide what, what feels like is right for them. So if that's a five minute walk, um, if it's stepping outside to do a breathing exercise, if it's um, you know taking a few moments to journal or call or text a friend, for example, those can all be really meaningful um, for that individual caregiver. Oh. Well, Dr. Carrier says if you notice a caregiver in your life is having a hard time, you may want to talk to them about how they're feeling and offer help if possible. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Taking a look outside there at our weather cam. We're going to find out what's in store for this weekend right after this break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee. The dollop of sour cream on your burrito. The melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious. Undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. Happy Friday. Woo, we made it through the week. How about that? John Kohler here at the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. Nice to see you. And as we head into the weekend, let's take a look at this weather map and rejoice. Look at this. Fernley, 55 degrees. Fallon and Carson City making little weather twins at 56. Aren't they so cute? Tonal Pot, the cool spot at 51. 54 degrees out in Goldfield. Beatty, look at you. You're the Hot Spot Award winner. 63 degrees. Congratulations. Uh, Amargosa just missed the mark, 62 degrees out there, and Las Vegas was 61. Death Valley, a super pleasant 72. Go visit, and here in the paradise of Pahrump, let's take a look. 59 degrees, current temperature. 61 was our high just a little bit earlier. 
Winds pleasantly out of the southwest at six miles per hour. The humidity giving it kind of a, a dewy uh, gloss as it uh, blew across the yard. 19% uh, humidity in the air this morning as the sun rose at 7.09 a.m. Setting this evening, look at that humidity rising up to 36%. Are we going to see some rain? Maybe not tomorrow, but that sunset's going to be gorgeous at 544. 20 minutes away, go check it out. A low tonight of 40 degrees. And as we head on into the week, a bunch of clouds. I mean, of course, we got all that humidity up there. Why not have some clouds? Saturday and Sunday, temperatures nice at uh, 69 degrees. And come Monday, look at that wind kicking up uh, Sunday, blowing in a weather system that's going to give us some rain for sure on Tuesday. Uh, a little precursor on Monday, but boy, look at that 85% chance of rain. I think we're definitely getting some rain on Tuesday, and it's going to be blowing sideways at 14 miles per hour. Watch out for that. Uh, we get some recovery on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but those temperatures dropping down to the low 50s, I'm not sure if I like that part, but uh, it's going to be a nice weekend, so make your plans for that and enjoy it, and we'll see you on the other side. Back to the desk, here's Deanna. All right, so we've got some events happening this weekend. First of all, of course, we're going to talk about that family fun day that is happening down there. It's going to be happening. Um, you know, Battleborn Financial is doing this at Internet Mountain Healthcare, right at 1397 South Loop Road. It's going to be happening from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. And come on down there and uh, Select Health is happening um, and helping with this. So if you have any questions, give them a call, 775-764-2252. We are going to have uh, games, train rides, face painting, prizes, fun for the whole family. Bingo's at 9 a.m. Once again, that's from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. 1397 South Loop Road, right there at Intermountain Health care i'm going to be down there dj and playing some music for you guys it's gonna be so much fun um remember bingo at nine the whole event starts at 10 10 to 1 um and of course uh, joe lombardo is going to be out here tomorrow having a little bit of fun down there our teaching and sellers he'll be down there at uh, i believe it's 1 p.m he's going to be down there and of course the uso show is going to be happening at the saddle west i hear that they are sold out tomorrow night they're going to be ha having that at 5 p.m and uh, it's going to be a Pretty good weekend out here. So we're going to have a lot of fun, especially down there at Intermountain Health with Battleborn Financial. And Brent Levitt is going to be down there answering all your health care questions. All right. Well, that is going to wrap up this edition of News 25. Um, we got Rory standing by right here, and she's going to tell us all about uh, student news next week. You caught us in the middle of a break looking for a pen a little while ago. <laughs> she's always here helping out. Come over here and say hi, Rory, real quick. There she is. Rory! There you go. She's going to have a good weekend, too. All right. And then we will see you back here on Monday from all of us here at KPVM TV, including Aurora right here. Have a great weekend. And uh, thanks for joining us here. Good night.